Coming to you from the dining room table at East Barbary Lane, welcome to a special episode of Full Circle, the podcast. I'm your host, Martha Madrigal. And I'm your host, Charles Tyson Jr. We're thrilled to introduce today's guest. As a 20-year veteran comedian, she paused her career and spent a decade as a sixth grade teacher. She came back to comedy in 2010, going on in 2015 to become a quarterfinalist in America's Got Talent. Her story is brilliantly told in the 2020 documentary, Julia Scotty, Funny That Way. She recently had a cameo in the movie Bros, which is now in theaters. She has a new podcast out called Comedy Centric, which I want to talk about. Okay. And she'll be at Le Peg, uh, the bar at Fringe Arts, uh, in Philadelphia on October 15th. And we will be there. You will have trans people in the audience. Yay! Please welcome a personal (laughs) shiro of mine and a very funny comedian, fellow Jersey girl, Julia Scotty. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, so nice to see faces to the names I was saying before we went on. I see you on my Facebook page, but you never, you know, you never get to meet the people sometimes. So this is kind of cool. How you doing? We're good. How are you? I'm good. I'm groovy. You look good. Yeah, you got the you got the plaid going for fall already. Yeah, I you know I, I was We're in the, I was in the closet this morning, and I don't mean you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. the actual closet. I assume and, uh, <laughs> I haven't been in a closet in quite a while, but and I, I just grabbed this thing. I was like, I don't know. Uh, I don't I like know. It. I just thanks, thanks. Everyone can't wear own. plaid. <laughs> I audition for movies. Like I have certain shirts that I wear for movie auditions, and this is my you know every time they want a lesbian. Uh, this is the shirt I wear. Put on the uniform. That's fair. <laughs> they do. They I uh, they always cast. You know, my my manager gets these requests for auditions, and it's always I never have a name in these auditions. It's always older, crazy lesbian, older woman, <laughs> crazy older woman, crazy straight older woman. You know, like bros, I was just listed as older straight woman. I really? Love, okay. Now that's I acting. Billy, I, well, I love Billy for that reason. He, you know, it's one of the reasons I love the movie so much. That is, I, I we haven't gotten to see it yet. I've um, heard nothing but good things about it. It's absolutely it. yeah, it's absolutely on my list because you know I'm hearing great stuff. Like, because there's a certain formula to queer filmmaking. A lot of times that yeah. you know we've got a lot of these comedies that are just, eh, but I watch them all anyway because family. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But but I'm hearing really great things about this one. I I I. I only went to see the movie because I wanted to see how long I was in it. Of right. course. Well, of course. Is, and by the way, if you blink, you'll miss me. But I'm, in, I'm definitely in it. Anyway, um, I I was curious about what he did because, you know, talking to him on the set when we were shooting, he, he really, even back then, was so committed to making this movie. And uh, I've got to tell you, I, I laughed out loud. And I, I'm a tough audience. And, and okay. in a couple of places, it's, it's very funny. And you, you know, he made the perfect rom com. Uh, if I could, I could so see, you know, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan in this thing. It's just, right. you know, if they were gay. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's just a funny, well done labor of love from him. So I, I know he's getting a lot of crap about it from a lot of people, but I hope, uh, I hope our, our our community rises to the occasion. I agree. Uh, I hope so. Um, you know, I've read a couple of articles talking about uh, the box office not being terrific. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I know Billy pushed back a little bit and was like, well, <laughs> you know, right. it's, not, it's not because it's uh, not a great film. It's because y'all don't come and support our, right. our cinema. Yeah. Even when times were were normal, getting folks to support was a challenge. Yeah. What do you think that is? What do you think that is? that is a good question because you know as performers who have been putting on shows forever that's a question we've been asking forever you know everyone says oh yeah let me know what you're doing and then when the rubber meets the road it's like well where are you well and it's it's gay so i mean you know we owned a bar for five years covid Mm -hmm. covid wiped out our bar 
I'm so sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but it was it was a great venue. Um, we did a lot of music. We did some comedy. Mm -hmm. um, just you know, we really tried to immerse it with the arts. But the thing that we carried the whole time was that the former owners on the way out the door said they're making it a gay bar. And a lot of people believed that. And a lot of people didn't come in because it was the gay bar. The gay right? bar, right. Yeah, yeah, so my book is going to be called The Worst Gay Bar Ever. Because I used to say all the straight people, this is the worst gay bar ever. I, I, You know, it's interesting you bring this this phenomenon up. And I know you probably had other things you wanted to talk about. And we will. Like, I don't know how you press for time. Are you pressed yeah, I'm not time? pressed. Okay. I, I always am amazed when I go with the market in theater and I look out in the audience and I'm hard pressed to find any LGBT people in the audience. I actually have to ask. And, and more often than not, there's a couple and very rarely are there trans people in the audience. Very rarely. And it, and I don't understand why that is. You know, I hear you. Uh, I hear you. I've got a couple theories, but, you know, and one, you know, like straight people will go to drag shows all day long, mm -hmm. and yeah. I know, and I know plenty of queer people who don't. You know, yeah. like they'll go to the ones that are still in the gay bars at eleven o'clock at night. They'll go there, mm -hmm. but they don't go to these brunches. They don't go to the, the bingos. They don't go. You know, that's the straight crowd that's being entertained. Um. So yeah, it's 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 rare to see an audience just kind of sit together. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's disappointing. I mean, uh, after AGT, I got so much support from people all over the world yeah, uh, sure. and trans folks you know and kids and parents and i mm -hmm. saw every now and then i'll get parents come to the show and they'll come up after the show and we'll talk and generally they're you know they're, they're wonderful people very supportive of their kids and i love that uh for them but geez it's it's it i expected i don't know what i expected but it just didn't happen you know mm. you know uh, that, right you're, we're talking about the same phenomenon uh, yeah. you know, because no matter how we had the bar for five years mm -hmm. and you know we finally we finally just put our hands in the air and we went okay we're we're whatever this is a queer space you know because it was always intentionally comfortable right so you know especially if 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 a a, a group a group of of new trans girls would, would come in you know, mm -hmm. everyone on, on our staff knew exactly how to handle that situation and go say hello. And, and <clears throat> you know, we were always aware of our crowd. You know, if we had a couple day, day people or whatever, they got savvy. Yeah. But if we ever had to say anything at all, they'd go down the street and then the story would be so either somebody hit on them or we yelled at them and called them homophobic or, or transphobic. And it's like that never happened. Right. That wow, I wish I, I wish I had there had been a place like that when I, you know, when yeah. I first came out of it because it was, well, you know, I mean, it was awful. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was awful back then. Um, you probably booked you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In a heartbeat. <laughs> I was trying. Um, you know, I, I remember after your surgery, like they had, um, they were trying to book talent at our local Sons of Italy and stuff. And I'm like, please call Julia. Please call Julia. Um, and, I, and, do you mind? Do you know my joke about that? No, this actually happened. I I, I was at I was with Regina De Chico, the, the, who's uh, the opening act on The View. She's good for very funny. She right. books me on the show. It's a, it's the sons and daughters of Italy. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. So I go up and I just look. Look how they go. I go. You know, I'm probably the only person in this room who is both. A son and a daughter of Italy. <laughs> <laughs> that was my I opening line. I knew. <laughs> that's great. fantastic yeah it was a real it was fun that's perfect fantastic. yeah we yeah. had we had a really intimate space and i know i guess it was my my son at the time who had said it's hard to do comedy there you know because the bar was kind of u-shaped and the stage was over there right. well, are they, we talking about the sons of italy or you no we're bar? talking about my our bar because oh, okay. i, I okay. i'd had you every day if i could have but you know it really wasn't a space that was as conducive to comedy where i think you have to pay attention mm -hmm. um you know so but it, it's things happen the way they happened yeah so, you know, it's funny because when I saw you, when I saw America's Got Talent, first of all, I was cheering so loud. 
and and I, it was brilliant. Uh, I love that you finally made that choice. God bless the front, the, the, the you know the Englishman Nigel uh, who was backstage, uh, maybe <laughs> needling you a little bit. <laughs> He um, was, he, yes, he was, he was a ball breaker, but he was a good guy. Yeah. Right. But he's the one that said, go ahead and say fuck. He, he actually, um, he, he said it a couple of times to me prior to the show because I wasn't going to do it. Right. <clears throat> I had a, another line and it was not as funny. Right. Because fuck was the only, it was the only choice, the only right. word yeah. choice for that particular bit. Right. And, uh, I, it wasn't until I got, Right to that punchline. I'm standing in front of all these people that I, I just made the decision that oh, he knows what he's talking about. Meaning Nigel, I'm just going to trust him, and uh, it worked out. I'm yeah, so did. glad you did. <laughs> I was going through a bunch of YouTube stuff last night, and and that clip. I don't know how many times it's been shared, but right. it's the clip with the you know. It's almost <laughs> like a tagline. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sticker like some like a Vanilla Silent or something there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was. Fantastic. It was not. I I didn't want to do it. I I I told my manager at the time. I said I don't want to do that. I hate stupid contests. I never do well in them. And and she, <laughs> you know, metaphorically slapped me in the face like he went insane. Right. Uh, and, and I guess I was. So um, always, you know, when the teacher presents itself, you know, the student, right. Well, when the student, I I love that ethos because I I feel the same way. Like I. <laughs> It's it's kind of an ongoing thing on the podcast. I started watching like the Great British Baking Show because they uh -huh. they play for a cake plate. There's none of this cutthroat bullshit. Like everybody <laughs> likes each other, and they're not allowed to really win anything. That's so, the way it should be. Yeah, right. so they get a plate at the end, and everybody's happy. Well, comedy, no comic has ever won AGT, I, and, and I probably never will. Uh, it's a tough. It's we shouldn't be allowed in that show. Not not be allowed, but we, you know we're at a disadvantage right at right from Jump Street. You right. know, a singer comes out. They go, you know, they're, they're all uh, the Brian. Guy, what's his name? Yeah, Justin Taylor Crum. Whatever his name is, Brian. Yeah, Taylor Crum. What's his name? I don't know. Brian Justin Crum. Whatever yeah. his name was. This guy was a powerhouse, and he should have won. He should have right. won that year. Um, and I and. Um, I don't know where I was going with this, but I don't know. But with, with, well, comics are at a disadvantage. I mean, you, yeah. it, it's just a different. It's it's you know comparing apples and and Chevys. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. But here I am. It. I never wanted to win it. I had no. I was glad I didn't win. Um, I would have liked to have gone at least to the semis, mm. uh, and that would have been fine. Uh, quarters, you know, would go okay, but the semis would have pushed me up a little bit more. But I definitely didn't want to win because they own you. After, yeah, you know, yeah. Once shows, oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. want anything to do with that. And it and they want a singer to win because then they can own the rights to the song and the recording contract and everything else that you do for them. For right, yeah. I think it was seven years or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. I still have the paperwork. I mean, <laughs> well, it's a testament to the impact that your performance on the show uh, made because I didn't watch the show but i knew who you were Interesting. you know because that's how funny you are <laughs> you 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 still manage to to make it through the ether into into my little sphere of consciousness <laughs> well that's kind of cool that, that makes me feel good that amazing yeah well nigel said that to us and i think that was in the movie too but i said you know right before i walked out he goes your life's never going to be the same after this no matter what happens and he was right everything changed I was going to say, it feels like that's been true because I think you could argue um, AGT got you to Nantucket mm -hmm. where you met Susan Sandler. Indirectly, yes, it got me to, yes, it did. It was a, right around this, it was the same year, I think, that I did. Okay. It was right after I did. It. And uh, uh, Jane Condon, who was a friend, a comic friend of mine, she, you know, she booked me up there. And yeah, that's where I met Susan. Yeah, yeah. So yes, indirectly, AGT was responsible for it. Okay, I love it. I love because so much, so much came out of that. Yeah, and yes. Well, the other yeah. reason we knew so the legendary Wid is our mutual <laughs> comedy friend. Oh, I love Michael. Yeah. 
And um, I think when you were competing, you know, he, he's, I, I, I know her. I know her. And she's a lot nicer now than she used to be. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I've heard that from other people, too, right. that, I, uh, that I was, not that I was mean. I, was, I don't think I was ever mean. I was just sad and unhappy, mm -hmm. and I didn't know why. And, Which makes uh, complete sense. Uh, yeah. I mean, you see there's that clip in Funny That Way where I do that, you know, I'm, do, I'm talking down the trans bit, you know, doing the... the I saw that. I was like, holy shit, was I that... Was I that fucked up? And it, and I guess well, I was, yeah. And that's real. You know? Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, it's comparable to people that make a lot of homophobic jokes. It's like, uh-huh. I know what you've got yeah. going on. Right. Certain <laughs> and that, politicians. Exactly. Yeah. And that was the era. I mean, the also vernacular. That. The vernacular really has changed since then. You know, because calling everybody a faggot and calling everything gay was very common back then. Well, yeah. And I never used the word faggot. I was not that. I mean, I was that, I was that enlightened. You know, right. my consciousness was. But when it came to trans folks... I knew there was something going on inside me, and and I like I I've said in the past I thought I was gay, and, and but every time I did it, I would just throw up, and, and I go, this can't be good. I mean, right, <laughs> you know, it's I not supposed to go. This. It's not supposed. That's not to the be ideal like reaction. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget the story about the guy taking the wine back. Oh my God, <laughs> that guy, Dave. That was his name, Dave. Dave. Yeah. That son of a <laughs> didn't even leave the open one. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. He, didn't. he did not. I couldn't even drink myself until unconsciousness. Passed. My goodness. I know, but you know, it's in a way he did, did me a favor because Kate, my Kate, yeah, got me to understand what the real issue was, and uh, and and it happened because of Dave. Wow, yeah. that, so that was Kate that. I yes. wondered because that's not that part's not clear. No, I didn't say that in, in the movie, but I, yeah. yes, it was her. Yeah, she. I'm not bless her because she. Uh, it's the most amazing human being I've ever known, and uh, I wish it had turned out differently. Yeah. No, but uh, I think she, about her all the time. I can tell. I I could tell in the movie. Do Do you all have any kind of? contact or not no she you know she went she went her own way she's happy and really that's all you can hope for a person you know right yeah you um you know in funny that way first of julia all julia scotty funny that way yes yeah, julia scotty julia Please, scotty susan, susan funny gets that really way. upset if you don't say that um <laughs> you know i realized what we had in common which is uh well we both married young Mm -hmm. I, I had just turned 22 the first time. That's well, that's how old I was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, both had two marriages, I guess, by the time, you know, I was in my early 30s or mm -hmm. mid-30s. Uh, we both had abusive mothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we both started smoking at 10 years old. <laughs> Where are you from? Where did you grow up? South Jersey. South Jersey. Okay. Yeah, so oh. so we're, we're uh, right off 55. Uh, near Pittman, near the Broadway okay, Theater. Okay, yeah, Pittman, yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just a, a f five minutes away. Look at y'all, a couple of Jersey girls. Yeah. You think it's a, you think those things, that kind of a background lends itself to to finding out that you're trans? Do you think, are those two related? That's, I guess, what I'm asking. You know, in part, I think they are, in part. Um you know, I know I started smoking because a couple of the neighborhood boys did or wanted to try it or whatever. And it was a way kind of for me to connect with them because I didn't I didn't connect with boys. I knew I was different. I knew I was different in kindergarten. I mean, you know, by the time I got to school, you know, I was one of those little kids telling people who I was and being told to shut up. Like, wow. that's not possible. How you close know, are we in age, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, you just turned 70, correct? Yes. This year, yes. and I will be 57. Okay, so you're uh, a different, really a different generation, a more... A little um, bit. You know, what's yeah. interesting, though, is my older brother and sister 
um, you're kind of sandwiched right between them. So the eldest was born in 51. My sister was born in 53. Okay. Um, so my parents, you know, are, are the generation, you know, I don't know how old your mother would be. Mine would be 92 right now. My mother would be about 103, I think, or something oh, okay. like that. Uh, no, I, you know, because I talk about uh, not identifying with boys. I, I had to really... Um, I, I would look at how the boys were reacting and then I would do that in the appropriate places. Does that make sense? Yes. I was attracted to women, but as we know, sexuality and gender identity are two, two different things. Completely. Completely different. But I mean, uh, the football story in the movie is a, is a true one. There are others too. I'm talking about that. Yeah. Uh, it was in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> oh, God. And I, I was. Me too. Catholic, a Catholic Briefly. Troop, our, lady, our Lady of Grace, Troop 342. And, uh, they, for some reason back then, Catholics believed that the way to build character was to box. I don't know. I don't know. But is it, you know, because everyone knows Jesus was a Golden Gloves champ when he was a right. kid. <laughs> you know, right. uh, he went around curing cauliflower ears and things like that. <laughs> but I got, you know, I was the worst boy scout. You ever? I wanted to be a Girl Scout. I didn't know it at the time, but I really liked, you know, the uniforms and. And the oh, sashes yeah. and everything. Yeah, I like that. You know. I what the hell did I make it to? We blow, which is that's Cub like Scouts. Right? Ironic. It's yeah. Cub. Yeah, but it's yeah. I guess that's Cub Scouts. I mean, same. I never made it to Boy Scouts. I uh, I was a Cub Scout, and that was kind of cool because uh, Cub Scouts was uh, Mrs. Riley gave us eggshells, a half an eggshell. And, with dirt in it and grass seed. Oh, yeah. And we had to grow grass because I lived in the city with that grass. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Right, right. But I enjoyed that because it was crafty, you know. Uh, but Boy Scouts, oh. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm cis, but I'm queer. And my experience was similar in that, you know, what the boys were doing. I was trying to, like, mimic that because it didn't come natural to me either, you know, cause that's not the kind of boy I was. Mm -hmm. And everyone was always trying to butch me up, which is why I was in scouts mm. in the first damn place. Did, were you forced to join scouts? Yes. Did you do it? So, okay. <laughs> cause it'll make a man out of you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, it, 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 not the way they were looking, but you know, no. whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> I was, I was an altar boy too. I mean, I, I, I oh. had a double wave. Oh yeah. I, I was a I was a legendary altar boy. I was a, I was a, they made altar boy training films based on me and my <laughs> my Latin was you know and I loved the the skirt and I loved, oh yeah I had the bell ringing I can't do it now but my bell ringing career ended a with a wrist injury I'm I'm left handed so me but, too yeah. me also left handed there was a study done about that with training are y'all the same that, person no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> They think, do you ever hear the one where they thought that trans uh, folks were at uh, were, were one time in, in in utero, part of a twin, and, and the twin died, the other zygote died, but the, you know, mm -hmm. the surviving one absorbed uh, some of the characteristics. That, that was a theory floating around for a while, too. Huh. I, my sense, and I don't know, where are you, you have a sister? Mm-hmm. No, are you the oldest or are you... No, she's the oldest. She's, she's the four oldest. And a half. Yeah, four and a half years older. You know, because there is something to, um, you know, the more children and the more boys in a family, the more likely they will they are to be gay later. So, like, you know, I have two friends who are the two youngest out of, like, ten kids, both of them gay. Hmm. You know, That's all the other ones are straight, but they're both gay. Um, I think there's something to that. And I think well, the, I thought it was because I grew up in a, like my parents were divorced. My father wasn't right. around, so being the only boy in an all female household, my mother and my sister were the only influences. Yeah. So, but I don't think that I don't think I that's really it. don't think that had anything to do with it. I no, don't recall I, ever doing that. I I really do believe it's nature, and I really do believe it's something hormonal that happens in utero. Right. I, yes, um, that I believe. The washing, I, the washes, the hormonal washes. Yes, I believe whatever that. it is that mm -hmm. that it's like you know, but when you know, you know. 
Right. You know, when when it makes sense, whether you figure it out at, at you know, 20, 40 or, 50, or three. Okay, yeah. Or fi- yeah. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, this is real. This is just who I am. And this has always made sense. That was the thing when Kate got me to that moment and literally it was, you know, the road to Damascus moment, the burning bush and everything. I just mm-hmm. my my eyes opened up and I saw it for the first time and it was glorious. Right. Scary, but glorious because I felt, oh my God, there that that's it. That's what I am. Uh, and and I never look back. Isn't that and it's it's never not one second of regret, not one moment right. of uh, even when I lost my kids, you know, yeah. just, um, that was, um, that part really spoke to me. Um, you know, I cried, uh, you know, when you and Dan were watching you on TV, mm-hmm. um, I cried when he called, when he said, Julie's my mom. My God. It, you <laughs> know, hasn't done it since, by the way. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, you know, yeah. uh, um, because I have, I also have, uh, you know, two adult children. One, you know, the boy is older than the girl. Um, and, you know, right now there's not much of a relationship right now. Um, he was very much in my life as an adult and then kind of just disappeared. Um, and my daughter, you know, it's, it's tense and infrequent. Um, and that's, you know, that really started because I did come out as queer first and I thought that would do it. You know, um, the second marriage just crashed and burned, mm-hmm. not as spectacularly as the first one, but it did. Um, and I was, Charles and I had known each other about 10 years. Mm-hmm. So we're uh, both regulars at this corner bar where my office was. I used to work at, at the University of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And we would see each other often at this bar and just chat. And we had done that for like 10 years. So we knew something about each other's lives. But, we, you know, we were just friends. And I was lamenting dating, being single again. Um, you know, men are no better than women. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, like just having that moment. And Charles yeah, like, everybody sucks. Yeah, I know. Everybody I know. sucks. And yeah. Charles was like, well, are you ever going to ask me out? Because I'm awesome. Right. Aww. And I was, and <laughs> I went, oh, yeah. And it's, yeah. Been, t- it's been 10 years. <laughs> um, wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, but I thought. And we haven't killed each other yet. We have not. You know, I had kind of convinced myself, well, I'm, I'm gay. That's it. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or at least I'm bi. You know, I still like women. But I like men, and maybe this is enough, do you know? And I waited. I waited until my daughter moved away to college. So, you know, there was that the rest of her high school year and then that summer before college that I didn't come out. You know, we we dated, Mm -hmm. but... um, They had no idea. They were... They had no idea. Well... I always amazed that people Come were on. surprised by something. I, you know, the one I mean, they're not headless. <clears throat> the one <Yeah>. thing <laughs> you occasionally say that I disagree with is if you're gay, you can hide. And that's true mm-hmm. for some. And it was certainly true, you know, yes. if you, you know, if you can pass as straight, I don't think I ever passed as either straight or cis, really. You know, as evidenced by everyone, when I finally came out as trans going, yeah, honey, I know. <laughs> well, I, I, when I, and, I me. and I still do. I yeah. still do that. And, and, and I try. I've thought about that. I have run that through my head. But um, for the most, it's more true than not true. That if I you, hear you, you can, you know, and, and we can't though. That was the. That's really the point of the right. joke. Is that we can't. We have no choice. We have to be in front of the world. You know, that's the only way we can make it. And and it's the only way medical. You know, the medical community will give us quote permission mm. to finally be who we are which pissed me off to no end yeah. 20 years ago you know it's like what do you mean i could get you know and i, I had this argument with with my psychologist mm. that you know if i were if i were a cis female i could get breast implants i could get ass implants i could get everything done 
I don't have to get approval from anybody. Real talk. With this, yeah. I have to get two psychologists to approve me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And I don't know if it's still that way. You know, some when one can argue the one getting all the implants might need the counseling. I want to say that for surgery, I think there you do still need like the two letters. I think they're mm. easier to get than they used to be. Uh, yeah, but imagine I. But, I, do they still have to live a year in the? In I don't the think general? that that's a requirement anymore. And and the other thing is that you know, and of course, this is what is exploding right wing heads all over the world is, you know, informed consent in terms of HRT. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're of age and you want hormones, you go get them. You know, like I didn't have to, I didn't have to convince a doctor um, that I was trans. I didn't have to have that whole thing I, I was first. fortunate. I was fortunate. Again, here is Kate. Uh, Kate did her homework and she found me, uh, she found me a male gay doctor. Mm -hmm. who uh, uh when i got the, to his office i couldn't even say the word true i couldn't even say what what i was yeah. i couldn't get the word transgender out of my mouth yep. i and i just kept beating her on the bush and <laughs> finally kate <laughs> she's just a little tiny she's about five foot nothing i mean she goes she's a woman and, she was, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and at this point the doctor was so good he was such a good guy he just took me in his arms and he held me and he hugged me because it's okay. We're going to be okay. This oh. is 20, 22 years ago. Yeah. That was not the norm. It wasn't. No, but you that know. was perfect response for you. Though. He was wonderful. He was one. Mm. Dr. Tommy. I, I, I won't give his last name, but, but yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Dr. Tommy. It's interesting. Thank you, Dr. Tommy. Um, you know, I, my friend, my good friend, my, you know, one of my trans mothers is uh, Elizabeth Coffey Williams. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was a John Waters actress. She was one of the Dreamlanders. Uh, she is the, the trans girl who flashes in, in Pink Flamingos. I don't know if you're familiar with the scene, but. I've seen, I, I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah, the woman with a dick was Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pre-surgery. Was and, that, is that how she was listed in the credits? Uh, something like that, yeah. Woman with the dick. Fla <laughs> or the flasher or something, flash or something, like, flash or something like that. Um, but, you know, she, I want to say her surgery was 1972. Wow. And she had moved down to Baltimore because she found out about their gender clinic and that they were doing surgery. And, you know, she arrived and said, you know, here I am, fix me. And... You know, for, she's 23 or so, had been presenting as a woman for, you know, since she got out of high school. I mean, and. Um, I wish that would have happened to me. I mean, I know I life would you. have been so much more difficult, but I wish I had been that sure about, about my gender issues early on. Instead, I, I yeah. floated in this netherworld. I had I knew something was I hate to use the word wrong, but. I knew something was not going, you know, going the way it should be, but I didn't know what it was because there was no information. Exactly. Right. And that that's so, you know, we talk about that just to, to finish that story. They denied her surgery for a period of time because you were supposed to agree to certain terms and, and nobody who was in the clinic was allowed to meet each other. So the trans people didn't know each other, couldn't know each other. Wow. And essentially you were kind of making a commitment to go out into the world and never tell anyone. And, you know, go change your name, wow. go live your life. Right. And that was expected. Like the witness protection program. And Elizabeth's like, why would I do that? You know, she was just guileless with all of it. She was like, you know, I just need you to fix this thing. And <laughs> one of the surgeons finally said, you know, because the other surgeons were saying, you are not the right candidate and one of them finally stood up for her and said she's exactly the candidate you know what was, this, their, what was their criteria for not being a candidate that you promised to run and hide right you know they didn't they didn't even want publicity for the fact that they were a gender clinic you know they didn't want it uh, oh really broad, yeah they didn't oh. want you know broad publicity i mean that changed it evolved but but at that point in time that was kind of the sticking point it's like you're not going to yeah, talk about I, uh, this, right? Yeah, I say, yeah, yes, I am. 
I had to go look for a surgeon because, uh, and it was right at the dawn of the internet. So I was able to get, you know, um, I found Dr. Broussard up in Canada, yes. Montreal, who was, a, you know, was a, you know, well, you know who he is. Mm -hmm. um, he was just one of the leading people in the, in the world, really, at that point in time with the surgery. And so that's where I went. Um, right. But if, I always thought it was weird that I had to leave the country. Mm, yeah, to, mm. you know, to become who I was, it was just there was so much. I don't know. There was, I you know, you're causing me remember all this stuff that I kind of stuffed down. But, I yeah. Hear you. yeah. Anyway, but look at you now. Number. It turned right. out okay, right? It, it did a little bit. A little bit. It's worked out. <laughs> it's worked out. I I never in a hundred. I'll tell you a story that when I came back to comedy. I just wanted to have some fun. I, mm -hmm. You know, I, I missed it. I wanted to get back to performing. So I found this little bar on South 2nd Street, right off, uh, right off South Street, uh, called the White Horse, not the White Horse, Black Horse Tavern or something like that. Okay. Anyway, I put, I, put a, I put together like a little cabaret. I wanted it to be like the improvisation where I started. You know, that you know people could come in. Oh, was it the uh, test kitchen? Yeah, the comedy test kitchen. Okay, That's what it was. okay. And what happened was I met this gentleman, I can't remember his name now, but he worked for the Philadelphia Gay News, and he was going to do a little blurb about it. And then he found out that I was trans and that I had this comedy pass. And he goes, that's the story. So, we, right. you know, we spent like four hours interviewing me. And the next thing I know, I'm on the front page, my entire face, my big stupid mug <laughs> is on the front page of this paper. Oh, and And... That's how AGT found me. Oh, so it was. Oh, uh, work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they're talent scout. You know, they have people out yeah. that are just looking for candidates. And uh, um, they found that article and a couple other things I had done. And that's how they approached us. I wasn't looking for it. And right. See, that's how, that's the kind of story that uh, gives me confidence in my theory about how the universe works you know it all you're always exactly where you need to be in that moment because if you weren't you'd be somewhere else right exactly you know i i discovered wayne dyer in, mm. the, in, the, in my transition uh, i was suffering so much with missing my kids and the being ostracized and feeling alone and whatever that i started to read his books and it's exactly one of the, the things he said uh, you are where you're supposed to be, and the universe will give you whatever you ask for. Uh, it's you know, uh, and, and once I got that through my head, my life changed. Right. You know, I you know th there are, there are speakers like him, and he was one of the early ones. Mm -hmm. And I remember my aunt had a copy of Erone your erroneous zones. Right. You know, and this is back in what the seventies. Yeah. And. Um, but folks like that now more recently, uh, I guess, Brene Brown or, or uh, Mel Robbins, like those people, so much of what they have to say resonates for trans people. Yes. So much of it is important information, but it's never directed to us. Do you know? I, I mm -hmm. It's almost like I think we're allowed to listen to it, but nobody ever, you know, like the door's not not closed but it's not intentional and i feel like it should be you can be in the room but you're not know? invited into the room yeah, yeah well i think for trans people the the, the 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 life goal is truth yeah uh, mm. it's finding your truth finding who you are and and being able to say it out loud it's the it, and and those kinds of speakers uh, offer you a way to get to that if you exactly. really listen to what they're saying they're very eastern philosophies yeah um and and they make a lot of sense. Yeah. So we um you know we carry a lot of trauma. We do. Mm -hmm. Um, queer people in general. Yeah. But you know certainly you know trans people have a a, a a unique and similar experience. Everybody's experience is different. Um, but let me ask you a question. I have sure. a question for you then. Um, do you feel, because I, I got into an argument with, with, an, with an HR person at, at a Pride event. You know? That's easy and, to do. And, yeah. And I said, there are, I find that a lot of lesbians don't want to be 
involved, say, um, with a trans person because they don't think we're women. Yeah. Um, and a lot of uh, gay men don't want to be involved with us because they think, you know, I don't know what they think we are, but yeah. we're kind of in this nether world, you know, we don't belong in either place. And yet that's the only neighborhood that is remotely like us, you know. Right, I, yeah, right. Uh, do you feel that way? Um, yeah. I think, you know, I uh, overwhelmingly, um, I see a lot of trans and trans relationships. Whether mm -hmm. two trans women, whether a trans woman and a trans man, mm -hmm. um, that's been common for a long time because we understand one another. Um, yes. I, I could see that easily. You yes. know, I, I think the way that it's changing um is that people are more open especially men about being bisexual or being pansexual whichever word you want to want to choose um the more of that that we see yeah the more of that that we see and the more common that becomes i think the less that there's going to be stigma right now yes yeah, so i think in generations below us yes below us it yeah is, it is but, I, but i'm seeing yeah. it now so you know mm -hmm. um I sit with the Transway group, um, which is which is the the trans peer support group that Elizabeth leads at uh, William Way Center, and um, you know we've been virtual since since the pandemic, which is wonderful because we have trans folks from all over the world now, mm -hmm. and um, I see a difference for this generation. I do. Yes, you I know, agree with you. Yeah, the, these young people in their twenties. A lot of the lesbians I know are, are very open, they, you know, at least in theory. But, you know, I've come open, across... Open, you mean open to that possibility? Open, open to the possibility of, of dating right. a trans okay. woman. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a contingent. There's a, there is this turfy kind of contingent. Yeah. Oh. Like, no, you know, and I'm not sure who they're mad at. I think they're madder at trans men because they feel like... They were abandoned. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, taking yeah, they're yeah. taking all of yeah. our bull dykes. Is, right. is kind of the thing, you know, like they're taking them away. Why can't they just accept that they're women? And then conversely, well, if I wanted to sleep with a man, I wouldn't. It's like, wait a minute, are trans women women or not? Are right, trans, you know. Yeah, it's it, well, according to J.K. Rowling, no. Oh, well, right. You know who really pisses me off that that uh, Barry Humphrey. Um, what's his name? The oh god, he, he he's a drag character, and he you know he calls everybody. He's an English guy. Oh, Damon, 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 that's his name. Oh, okay. Um, hates work us. I'm not familiar with. Right, hates us. Wow, yeah. a really? Guy who's made his living? Really in drag? Yeah, in drag hates us. He doesn't See. think we're, we're I, and I've given up trying to, to you know like I won't have that argument because. It, You'll never win. Wait, you're the one that's going to start making rules about gender? <laughs> Hold on <Wow>. for a second. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, you know I, maybe, like, I, I'm not familiar with that part, but, you know, a lot of times people people don't see past who they are. Mm. Well, you know, e yeah. everyone sees the world more or less as they are. And, you know, so what's true for them must be true for you. You know, right. it's like... Where the conversation for me begins and ends often is, you know, when someone says, I just don't understand the trans thing. And I say, it's not yours to understand. That's what I say, too. I, I you know, I you don't have to like me. You don't have to right. like who I am, what I do. You know, you don't have to like I, I don't affect your life. But that's the problem. I had friends, you know, supposed friends who abandoned me completely. Childhood friends who just out and out told me I was nuts and. And right. I haven't heard from them in, in, you know, 23 years. Yeah. And I... Uh-oh. 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 Where'd you go? Uh-oh. Oh. There you there are. There you are. You're back. I'm sorry, my phone rang and I... Uh... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oops. okay. Friends, 23 um, years, gone, boof. And, and so, 23 years, and then they, they just, you know, they just... They just abandoned me. And I realized I was, they didn't, it wasn't so much that they didn't, they hated me for being trans. They hated me because I 
I made them uncomfortable. I, I went into their nice, safe world, and I threw this bomb in their world, and uh, it, it it just knocked them off their pins, you know, and they, and oh, yeah. they couldn't handle it. And on some level, I think it touched them, you know, we're talking about gender here, the very essence of what a human being is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think it touched them in a way that made them uncomfortable. Well, yeah. also, I think... Uh, there might be a touch of maybe jealousy there because when someone is living the their life in an authentic and much freer way than society allows the status quo, people, you know, it bristles people, you know? And that goes to the success or not lack of success of bros. I think that's part of it. You know, that this thing is a, it's a celebration of love it's a celebration of being gay. It's a celebration of everything. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes, you know, the, the, I hate the, the Christian writer, whatever you want to call it, uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Because they're so, up to, I always said if it wasn't for LGBT folks, this would be a very beige world. Yeah, you thank know? you. It would. You know? it we bring, would. Yeah, we had road, right? All your and color. what they love about us is what they hate about us. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. And they really hate it when we're unapologetic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it's one thing if you're kind of excusing the the space you take up you know like pardon pardon me for taking your air right <laughs> but yeah. the minute you're like that's fucking bullshit and i'm not doing it anymore i think you know people go oh wait a minute because there's this like assumption i permit you to live right well that's not how this works yes not how it works yeah and that's uh those people are their anachronisms. They're dinosaurs. They'll be gone soon because, like we said earlier, these new generations are changing <laughs> things. We're changing things just right. by existing, you know. Um, and yeah. so that's that's where we are. Anyway, I what do I, you, I ask? What happened? <laughs> now you're sideways. <laughs> uh oh. I think your phone rang again. Busy lady. She'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Shall we take a break? Well, this is where we'll put one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, we were just talking about being left-handed, and the Italian word is what? Sinistra. As in sinister. As in sinister. I I use the analogy a lot because we know the numbers, um, you know, at the turn of the, the, the last century, right? When they stopped beating the left-handed people and tying their hands behind their back, the number of, yes. of people went up exponentially. So we went from less than 1% to somewhere around like 4%. And I think there's an analogy there where trans people are concerned. Did you freeze up again? Okay. So I just want to finish this left-handed thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that there's a really good analogy there, you know, about what happened when we just let left people be left-handed and what they want to say is a trend uh, among folks identifying as trans. I, I, I think it's, you know, they thought... Recently, it was a little less dangerous, and they all started to raise their hand. And, uh, you know, about all these people coming out, yeah, yeah, I think that's the case, absolutely the case. That's why all these kids are coming out. I, I just did a, a, a benefit up in Connecticut for uh, Connecticut Voice, it's an LGBT uh, magazine, okay, and um, they were they were honoring, um, you know, as they do the heroes and corporations and whatnot that support the community. And the uh, one of the honorees was this eleven-year-old girl, and her actually it should have been her whole family got the honor. They were from Texas, mm-hmm. a young trans girl, right? and she uh, she was getting abused at school. Oh, yeah. The whole community, Texas being Texas, right. her mama packed up everybody, um, single mom, took, and just drove cross country, and somehow found a safe haven in Connecticut, which is a very like New Jersey, a very welcoming state yeah. for trans folks, you know. And uh, I met this young girl, and she really was just 
she gave me a lot of hope a lot she was an inspiration she was just terrific. i love that yeah, yeah. i yeah. love that we sat down mm-hmm. with a group of high school kids uh this summer and they they it's a theater group and they produce their own plays and they they wrote and starred in this play that was really uh inspired by don't say gay in florida Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Um, and it was it was powerful, and yeah. you know I just kind of sat in a circle uh, with a group of I don't know twelve or fifteen of them, and I that's what I left with. I left with hope. Yeah, we uh, I was on. I don't know if you could see this poster behind me, the yellow one. Yeah, the funny women of a certain age uh, poster from we did a show in California, but we also did a tour in Florida. And you know, do you know what the funny? Oh women yeah, of yes. Age? Okay. Carol Montgomery so, is at the yeah yes. mm-hmm. yeah so Carol brought, you know brought a bunch of us down there and I was on <laughs> I was on stage in Florida and Carol was on the noodling around backstage and this I heard this clumping noise she's very she's very heavy okay. footed and I and I I could hear it off while I'm on the I'm in doing the show and I just I, and the audience heard it too I said geez I for a minute, I thought it's only Carol, but a minute I thought it was DeSantis's army coming to take <laughs> right. right, and and they started laughing. I went, you know, why don't we all just say gay, 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 gay? gay. <laughs> this whole audience screaming gay, yep. and it was it was only a week or two after he passed the bill right. or made the ban or whatever the hell he did. So uh, there is hope. Yeah. There is hope. There is, and I, yeah. you know, I think that's why the backlash. Do you know? I I think. Um, we kind of created a world where these kids felt like, you know, the language is out there. We have the internet. They're seeing more examples of, of people like them. Mm. So they're getting the language. You know, I tell the story and I can't remember how old I was. Maybe I was seven or eight. Uh, A neighborhood kid Mm. had just seen trans people on Phil Donahue. So it had to be the summertime and he came running outside not a bit of guile. His name was Scott. And he said, I know what you are. There's a word for it. And I was like, what? And he's like, no, I just saw them. I saw them on the TV. I saw all these women. They were born, you know, they were born boys, but they were really girls. That's what you are. You're a transsexual. I was like, well, okay. And that was the first I ever had a name for what I was. And I went, I mean that made it made all the sense in the world. I I you know people I love heroes my heroes I don't love heroes but there are certain people I consider heroes. Billy Tipton being one of them I don't mm-hmm. know if you know yes you know who yeah is? and uh, we'll tell we'll tell your audience just that Billy Tipton was a musician in the 1940s I think right. uh, played with Midwestern saxophone player played with big bands and uh, uh, lived his whole life as. Billy got married a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that how he faked that one, but when he died, right? He, Billy wasn't Billy. Billy was somebody else, and uh, I I always thought that is the coolest fucking thing I've ever heard right. in my life. <laughs> <laughs> We we uh, we did an episode recently, and uh, our friend Nelly was talking about Polly Murray. I don't know. This. I don't know. Polly, Polly Murray, Murray uh, was an attorney who actually, you know, her work informed Thurgood Marshall and her work informed um, RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, and she she was one of these brilliant minds in the law. And as they looked back, you know, in her notes and her journals and all that, she had been writing to doctors for years uh, saying, um, you know, I think hormones would help me. I, I, I'm familiar with your, your experimental work or whatever with hormones, and uh-huh. I think that this is something that, you know, so probably with the language, um, Pauli Murray would have, you know, was certainly at least non-binary, um, you know, in presentation and, and, and the way that they lived. Um, but, you know, if there would have been a la- the language then. History is rife with people like us. Yeah. We're, oh, yeah. we're everywhere. We've been, we're, it's, it's, I mean, I, I try to explain to people in certain cultures, we're revered. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're wise people. Mm-hmm. It's only here in the West that you're an asshole. <laughs> right. 
I mean, I you know, <laughs> the the term that I use all the time, and and I and I offer it to you freely, is you know what we are, we're rare. Oh, I like that. Not weird, not strange, not we are rare. Rare, I like. Yeah, that. and and. <laughs> I do it to the kids all the time. And one of them turned around on me the other day. I'm like, you know, she messaged me and she's like, are you, are you not having a great day? And I'm like, I'm really not. And she's like, well, don't forget you're rare. And I was like, you know, <laughs> <Duh. Yeah. laughs> but I think it's how we should look at ourselves. You know, I, I'm at this point now. Uh, I always hoped I would get here. Where I just don't give a shit what you think of me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's a function of old age or not, but I, I've shed all of the Catholic guilt. I've shed all the Italian guilt. I shed all the, the you know, the, the binary guilt. All the, you know, all of it. It's all. But I should say all gone. But you know, mm -hmm. that, but uh, for the most part, I'm happy being me, right. and I am rare, and you, as we all are. But I, I, I celebrate my rareness. Yeah. Rarity, rarity, rarity. rarity. Yeah. either one. <laughs> yeah, I like them both. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just, I think it's important because you know that's one of the things I say a lot, especially with all this nonsense in the news. Is you know we have to know ourselves and know ourselves well, and we have to respect mm -hmm. ourselves. And it's you know the trans experience really is an internal one, and you're going to have people who will never understand you. And that you have to be okay with that. You've got to be able to sit with that. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder here uh, at the bottom. There's a picture of you know, Kevin Meany. Okay. Oh, Kevin Meany. Do you know, do you know Kevin? Do you know who Kevin yeah, is? I don't care. Kevin. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows him for that. Kevin and I, uh, we reconnected. We I, we I knew him early in my career. <clears throat> Not well. We were never friendly, friendly. But in the latter part of you know. In this last incarnation, we met on a gig in Delaware again, and we became fast friends. He was gay. I was trans. We both came out late in life, and we toured together for, uh, on, uh, we called the show Big Pants and Hot Flesh. Yeah. I love because that. Because we're big pants people. And Kevin, um, God love him, he, he, he was so comfortable in his gayness, and it took him so long to come out and when he did he just he just but his family embraced it too his daughter just was loved him to death and, and he and he died he was just taken from yeah. him suddenly um, be six years ago this month but um i smile when i think about how much he he spread the joy of being who he was he there was nobody like kevin you know nope. <laughs> right. well and authenticity shines it just does yeah, yeah. I mean, I love, you know, you said there were two things when you came back to comedy mm -hmm. uh, that you would be, you would be honest and mm -hmm. fearless. And fearless. And those two things still, still hold true, maybe more so now. I love that. Um, I had, well, I had to make that decision as things began to develop for me uh, career-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this happens with a lot of people who find success that you, you tend to, uh, sanitize yourself, right? Um, so you don't piss anybody right. off. And like Kevin, <laughs> I don't care. <Right. laughs> Good. If if you don't like me, then change the channel. You know, go someplace right. else. But you do get entree into places other trans folks don't get invited. For instance, uh, um, what I learned something. In, in looking through YouTube that you, you're kind of a frequent contributor or were on New Jersey 101.5 with Steve Trevelisse. And I, I didn't know that. I mean, when I worked in Princeton, I used to listen to 101.5 all the time in the car. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't in a long time. Well, let me, let me, I don't, I love Steve. Steve's an old friend and uh, I will do a show anytime. And Steve is not like, the rest okay. of the people on the show. But I, I look at it this way. If I can't go into the lion's den and, you know, and say, say who I am, then, uh, you know, I shouldn't be doing stand-up. I go on that station because I know their demographic. Right. Okay. And, you know, 
And I want to show people, I, I, A, I'm not afraid of you, and B, I'm just like you. You know, and if you can't see that, uh, then there's something wrong with you, not that me. Part. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Um, you know, so that's why I do it. And I love Steve. Yeah, I, I, I was impressed. It was just a thing I didn't know. And because, you know, most of the conversations that are happening about us are without us. Yeah. Yes. And to Steve's credit, I, I always tease him and call, I'm his go to transfers. Yeah. Person. yeah. You know, whatever his story pop, but to his I credit. That. <laughs> you know, did you get yes. that? He, uh, he's very supportive of us. And when an issue comes up, he, you know, he wants me to, to talk about it. He doesn't bar me from anything. So I give him a lot of credit. It's one of the reasons I love him. He's a good guy. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think one of the issues you were, you were talking over was, you know, what's happening with schools and, and, you know, where do we draw the line and, you know, uh, you are a teacher. So, you know, um, it's coming up more and more because of these laws where educators are say, are telling kids, don't tell me. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't come out. If you're not... I had a principal omitted. I had a principal when I, when I had gay kids coming out to me. And I went to my principal and said, we got to have a peer leadership group, uh, a gay straight alliance. He goes, no, we don't have any gay kids in the school. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, Miss Crabtree, there's something terribly wrong with you. I hope that person didn't teach math or statistics because that doesn't even make sense to say. (laughs) Right. He was just such a bigoted asshole. And, you know, and he didn't want to have to deal with the parents. That's what it came down. It was politics. Right. He was, he was, Mm -hmm. and he wound up getting drummed out of education anyway. You, because if you have at least 11 kids in the school, you got at least one gay kid. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. You, um, you said somewhere um, that you left education. Well, you did your homework about me. I did. I always do. I I, I over prepare. I ins- I over prepare. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you said somewhere I left education. You know, it wasn't the teaching that you left. It was b- the bullshit. It was the bureaucracy. It was the system. Yes, that's exactly right. I would be teaching today because I love teaching. I love the kids. I loved everything about mm-hmm. it. Um, I couldn't, but the comedians don't play well with authority. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It's just our nature, you know, we just, <laughs> right. It's part of the gig. I was very, well, I was vocal about what I, the, the injustices I saw and the things I, I wanted to change and, uh, and, and they just wouldn't let me do it. So. Right. And we're seeing a lot of people leave the profession with the, you know, these invasive laws, that that you know really are messing with the lives of of families and and children uh where they're saying you know i don't i don't make enough money <laughs> i don't this is well there's that too i mean that's uh you know that's the other it's, part it's it. you know and it's not just a money thing but it's like if i you know if they can't be committed to teaching and politics has to stand in the way it's like uh, you know okay right yeah, I couldn't be. This a was an now. ugly, thankless job to begin with, and yeah, Charles Charles went through it for a while. He was teaching in a charter school, and it was like I can't do this anymore. It's a, it's incredibly difficult. Mm. It's next to comedy, maybe the most difficult job yeah. there is. Uh, be, it's actually harder than comedy because it's 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 so much like comedy, mm. but you get the same audience for 180 days in a row. Right. That's you know, now that you say that, you yes, on day one, yes, it ain't going to get any better. You know? I've done both. Uh, You're exactly right. <laughs> my, my favorite teacher ever was my eighth grade English teacher. And she was also one of the funniest women I have ever known. Hilarious. It helps. It comes in handy. It comes. I always say that all of the life skills I've learned that have gotten me through, I've learned from comedy, everything, rejection, success failure i mean it all cut you learned it all in comedy yeah mm, mm. i um mm. i wanted to talk to you it, it, charles was especially impressed and i remember him sharing uh it was the last dave Chappelle kerfuffle oh uh, yes you know when somebody came up and hit him on stage and, and all of that happened mm-hmm. um and your response got some traction it did. It did. You were in the L.A. Blade. Uh, yeah, they. Were, yeah, it did. Yeah, I love how you're. You just made a Facebook statement, a Facebook status, right? And it got picked up, and I was like, it, "Well, because you said all of the things, you ticked all the boxes," and 
I was so proud that it got picked up because it needed to be seen and heard. Yeah, I, I keep saying all you have to do is keep us out of your mouth. That's all you have to do. You don't, that's, you know. That's the way I feel. This is you're punching down. You're punching down. I I, I think I brought that up too to the to the to the, in the yeah, table yeah. too. And I don't get it. I I just. I've always said I'd be more than happy to get on, you know, have a conversation with Chappelle in an open forum where we could just talk. Right. But I don't think it would, well, first of all, he's never taken it up on, taken me up on it, nor does he have to. Um, but uh, he's, it's ignorance. It's the same as me saying the, 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 the anti-trans stuff I said 20 years ago, 30 years right. ago, whatever I said right. it, you know, I, it's ignorance. I was ignorant. Uh, and for that to be the, be the first thing to come out of his mouth when he got tackled, I thought it was a trans person. I mean, yeah. Come on. Right. Um, right. You know, you're supposed to be a comedic genius. Mm -mm. Show it to me. Thank you. <laughs> right. And well, and when he stays in his lane, he is, you know, but he's yeah. also a, a multimillionaire with, with a very large ego. I mean, that's, that's what I see on display. Yeah. Well, to me, it felt yeah. like, you know, and having taught kids, you, are familiar with this when you tell a kid stop doing that then they do it more nah that's yeah. what that felt like to <laughs> me well, we had a president like that didn't well, we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. um, four years of nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know at the lucy voice <laughs> <laughs> i i like to believe and and lee she was funny i have never uh I've I've emceed a lot of events. I've jumped up on a stage a lot of times. Uh, I was a drag performer for a while, but I've never done stand up. Uh, never. But comedy has saved my life, especially women in comedy. I you know I love to laugh. I you know remember going to see Joan Rivers live. I you know uh, just just so many so many people. I have every book about Lucille Ball ever written. Um, I hate the narrative and I just I, I want to hear your perspective on this I think I've heard it a little bit but there is this narrative of men uh, among particularly the white men of a certain age in comedy like I can't talk about anything anymore and I think it all comes down to the punching down aspect of things like if you're not punching down at people you can talk about anything yes you can talk about anything if you're not punching down uh -huh. But I think part of these comics that are complaining that they can't talk about anything is that they're, it's not intelligent comedy. That part, yep. You know, if you're right, if you're a good writer, uh, and I think I'm a fair writer, but I'm, I'm not a great writer, but I'm a fair writer. But I do, I'll give you an example. I do a joke uh, uh, in my, about transitioning, and, and the line is, I had a guy say to me, well, why would you want to become a woman? Well, well you know, just like that, like Edward G. Robb. <laughs> 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 And I looked at him and I went, I don't know, because my salary's too high. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and it's it's an intelligent response to a stupid comment like right. that. And I think that's part of why these comics are complaining. I know Carol Montgomery has heard from a, a bunch of men. Why don't you do a um a, an old funny male whatever? And she's like, well, that's every night at the that's comedy Thank you. Show. That's every other show. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> every other show. Why do you? That's like that asking you? for straight pride. Right. <laughs> That's yeah, every exactly. other day. <laughs> well, remember yeah, exactly. that time in the bar when uh, when Miss Rita asked for the BET Awards to be on the television, so I put it on, and then she left, and and someone came in like, "How come there's not a white entertainment television?" I just took the remote, and went there, it is, there it is, there, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's just I I, I don't know. I you know I I've, I've sort of like you know. <laughs> get out of my that part <laughs> but yeah i've said that before it's like well if you can't tell any more jokes without making fun of a group of people then maybe you're just not as clever and funny as you thought you were yeah i mean my comedy reflects my life i talk about being mm -hmm. old i talk about living in an, in, an, in an over 55 community i talk about not being able to find love i talk about being trans i mean it's all stuff that i can I've experienced, but I never go out and pick an individual that that can't punch back. Right. It's never punching down. It's always punching right. up. Right. And that's, I think, comedy at its best. That's exactly what it does. It's truth to power. Mm -hmm. Carlin was a perfect example mm -hmm. of that. You know, Carlin punched, only punched up. Yeah. You know, uh, 
Yeah, and uh, although he did have a little transphobic stuff towards you know in his commercial years, but we could forgive him that. Yeah, I I think it is important to put things in context. I do. Yeah. And then you hear people saying um, like, well, back in the day when people weren't so easily offended, I'm like, well, there were kind of shitty jokes then too. It's yeah. just, you know. Yeah, I mean, I lived, you know, things used to be so much better. I go, well, yeah, not if you were black. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> you know, like someone used Andrew Dice Clay as an example. And I'm like, okay. Oh, wow. Of, of <laughs> how you could say things back in the day and people weren't so easily offended. I'm like, my queer black ass was always offended. I just couldn't say anything because it was 1988 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, oh, you can't see this, but there was a family of deer walking across the street in front of my house. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, um, it, uh, you know, the, the pro. I think what they're afraid of is that we're going to run out of things to make to make fun of. Which I think is ludicrous right. because you're just going to have to find other things, more intelligent things. You know, there used to be, you know, if you were a fat woman on television, you, you, you know, you were there for comedic relief. Yeah. You know, you, just, you were the fat, you know, I got you. Bl-. Like a uh, taxi was an example of that. Alex has a date with a blind date with a woman. He opens the door and, and she's a heavier mm-hmm. woman. And, um, he had to learn. His consciousness was raised that there was more to her than just her looks. So I think, you know, little by little, we're chipping away at the wall. Yeah. A little, yeah, little by little. Yeah. And I think another thing is, you know, mediocrity doesn't cut it like it used to. Right. And so that's where a lot of comics, male comics, cis white male comics, um, <laughs> are feeling the pressure. <laughs> Um, there, they are. Well, I think the women comics, and I know I'm generalizing here, but I think we are, I think we are more, and I include myself in that. We're more thoughtful species than the men. You know, we we. I think that's yeah. always, <laughs> always been true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I thought Hannah Gadsby's uh, oh, yeah. Nanette was Love Love this groundbreaking. Thing. Because, you know, she really, she's so brilliant and she really dissected it and said, I'm not going to be the punchline anymore, was Mm -hmm. really basically where that went. And I think I watched it twice through and then I like sat him down and took his phone away and said, you have to watch this. She is compelling. And there were a lot of men that, no offense, um, but that that just dismissed her. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. A lot of comics too dismissed her as not. Uh, as not, re- I don't know. I just, Didn't they say she wasn't really a comic? Like that was a one. She's one. a performance artist. It's a performance. She's an actress. It's a play. Now, from what I understand, in Australia, that's how comics get exposure by doing these um, these shows, right? Piece set pieces. It's a lot like English theater too. It's, uh, it's not, you know, it's what we do here is is kind of unique to. Here. Right, and maybe England. We could go to England and do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I love her. I think she's. Fantastic. I do too. I do too. Well, she also said, you know, these rules that you say I'm breaking, you know, were set in place by white men, straight white men. So me not being that, I exist outside those rules. So what are you even talking about? <laughs> right. It's funny. I can't. Um, I can't use that because I was one. Although I never considered myself white because I'm Italian and our history in this country is not the greatest. So, you know, so it's just, I, we always have this identity thing, Italian Americans. And um, I'm also Greek and I have some African in me too. So, um, it, but I mean, so you it's, can cook your ass off. <laughs> I, cook my ass I have maybe. seen I, that. Yeah. Just the pictures. I can smell the food. I'm like, Oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. Mama loves cooking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does. Um, but it, um, I never felt that I had the right to, to do that white cis male thing. Okay. I, I didn't have the right because I lived as one for so many years mm. and I took advantage of that privilege. And uh, it was this experience of transitioning that opened the, opened the doors for me and I, and I saw it all. Uh, it, it's just, this was so much more than just a gender shift. Sure, This was a revelatory uh, experience a life-altering experience for me. I saw the world 
it's a blessing because I got to see the world in ways that so few people get to do. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you 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 two have seen it that way too. I mean. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and now I roam the world <laughs> in this as Julia doing shows for predominantly cisgender people. Right. It's weird. <laughs> Hi. But I think, you know, it's where you're supposed to be. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm never more at home than when I'm on stage. Yeah. That's the only place I ever feel totally at home. Right. So writing. And I haven't mm-hmm. heard you talk a lot about this, but you wrote a play during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Wait a minute. Man, oh man, you really did. Love and long. Shades. Love and Shades. And it's set yeah. in 1969. And that's all I know. I, I can give you, I can give you the thumbnail. It's a, yeah. it's a story of an Italian family uh, in New in Jersey uh, with a daughter who's a lesbian. Uh, she falls in love with with a black girl, uh, which in Italian cultures was mm. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Plus it was plus it was the '60s, so it explores all of that, uh, and it turns you know turns out. The aunt she's so close to was all was was a closeted lesbian for years, so it explores the those, you know those. What you were talking about the good old days, mm-hmm. you know, in ways that. Um, this play keeps coming back to haunt me. <laughs> it's never been produced, right? Uh, but it's somebody somebody took it, asked to see it, and took it to uh, a person who produced this play. So. Again, the the universe will provide, and it mm-hmm. will if it's to be produced, it will be produced. Right, right. Well, I'm intrigued. I want to see it. <laughs> I'd love to send it to you if you want. To no, read. I would yeah, love to. Actually, I would love to do a staged reading. Ooh, ooh. So if you have a space that you, you know. Well, wait till you see. Uh, wait till you see Lepeg. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna do it at Act Two Playhouse in Amboy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you, where I recorded my album. Right. There. Like, I love that. Theater. I've I've never wow. been there. Uh, what? It's a perfect little theater, mid hundred sixty seats, maybe two hundred seats. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I love that. But I would like to. I don't care where I do it. I just want to do right. it and see it. You know, because I think it's got. I think it's got something to say. You know, about intolerance and and injustice and um, being who you right. are. So, yeah, I yeah. love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I know you're a good writer because uh, you know I haven't I haven't seen Jesus at the Wawa in a little while, but <laughs> oh my god! You know how many people come up and ask me why he hasn't been around? Yeah, and I and I don't know why he hasn't been around. It's like just like the real Jesus, you have to be inspired by him. Mm. Um, uh, I actually was knocking around in my head a play about it about jesus at the wall i'm thinking about for for uh, for listeners who don't know uh julia used to more regularly put little stories yeah. uh on facebook just i ran into jesus at the wawa this morning and yeah. i said hi jesus all the dialogue <laughs> and you know and he'd be like you know you want to grab me a coffee and a pack of smokes and yeah sure he's a mooch yeah he's, he's a, a mooch, mooch. He was, he was mooch. i'll tell you the the, the where that came from uh, uh growing up catholic they would they would always been, and you know force us to think well you know what you could see a, a bum on the streets that's what they call them back then a bum on the streets and that could be jesus mm-hmm. you know, like, oh my god you know i don't want to piss you know, I don't so i was always be kind to bums that was the lesson yeah. but that that was the genesis of him and he he it's never determined whether he really is Jesus or just a guy named Jesus or just somebody who thinks he's Jesus. But he does all these Jesus like things, you right. know. And he and he espouses all of the philosophies which are wonderful philosophies. Yeah. And and that's why I, I think that's why people like him. My Jesus you know, my yeah, yeah, my Wawa yeah. Jesus. Um, so thank you for my, I, I thought it was else. I thought it was brilliant. It was just always fun to read and um yeah, I gotta do. I, I should start doing it again. I kind of got. I was getting stale, and I said, mm, "I'm jumping the shark here if I don't if I don't just pull back a little bit." So maybe I'll maybe yeah, I'll, you I'll know. Okay. 
but they were inspired, so I think it has to be inspired. And there's there's been so much coming at us that mm. right. Well, there was so they were always there was always some issue that that was in the news that, that uh, if you go back and look at them, uh, it, it it was they were inspired by an event. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. So which I love uh, and mostly during the Trump years. That's <laughs> yeah. When they would. It was just a lot of fodder. So, right. How long have we been on? We've been on like an hour. We and have. Hour. We have. You I'm, have I'm been sorry. extremely generous with your time. I, I've just, I've been dying to meet you and just be, be able to sit down and, and chat. Um, well, I hope this was all you hoped it Absolutely. <laughs> um, I've been doing myself a lot. Thank you. This has been a lot. Yeah, I, I can't wait to, to meet you in person. Um, we will be there. I'm supposed to ask you, Henry Britton said, ask Julia if she thinks I'm pretty. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, Henry sent me, he happened to be at the, what the club was it? The Venture. Yeah, he, he the was Venture. the manager at yeah. the Venture and yes. Manager the Venture. And uh, the night I was there, the one and only time I performed there, it was just somebody got stabbed out. Yes. <laughs> We couldn't be there that night, and I was there the next night. And Tommy, the bartender, who was you know, is telling me this whole story. Everybody is coming off the story. Oh, I didn't hear that you were there the night before. I just heard about it. It was stand Julia there. that yeah. was that was performing that night. Oh, Jesus! And Nat- <laughs> our friends Natalie and Meg were there to see you that night, and they'll be coming with me uh, on the fifteenth. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. They were really excited. Um, so you and your friend wants to know if I think. Oh, Henry said, "Ask her if she thinks I'm pretty." You don't have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> be honest with you, I can't remember. Exactly. Do you have a picture? Oh God! And I can make a determination. I, yeah. do, do I have a picture of Henry when Henry's not in drag? I don't whether I think he's pretty or not. Oh, he's in drag. What? He uh, he is Henastasia on occasion. I think it's been a while. <laughs> um. I like Robert Beach. Robert Sandy Beach was there. Yes, was yes. I love Robert. He's a sweet. Uh, that's. Oh, right, stop moving it. There. Let me see. lift it up a little bit. Lift it up. Which one? In the gonna... green. In the green. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's him with his husband. Aww. <laughs> but yeah, San- yes. Sandy Beach uh, was bartending at the yes, venture that night. What I love. That's right. What I loved about Henry was this. All of, you know, my queer icons. So, you know, in the early 80s, as soon as I started driving, um, my cousin and I used to, you know, come from Little South Jersey and and head to Atlantic City. And uh, my favorite bartender was Sis, because I had a huge crush on, on, uh, on Sis. And Sis used to work at the Rendezvous. And Sandy Beach was a bartender at the Chester, I think. Okay. And they watched out for us. Like, we were not of age. We had no right to be drinking. But, you know, we, we found Mecca. And they would, and they would, they looked out for us. They kept us alive. They told us who to stay away from. And, you know, or, or they told them, leave them alone. Leave them alone. I think if you are an other. Yeah. Uh, you find other other right, right but i you know i had lost touch with them and yeah. you know life happened and children happened and you know and um i found them all again at the venture in cuz as they would lose their jobs in the other gay bars for whatever reason henry henry kind of collected everyone all all, all the, yeah, uh, the ventures closed now right it's gone. the venture yeah. is closed yeah and I, we haven't gone i think it was closing uh when I was there, it was yeah, it was kind of yeah. on the way. Yeah, the last week I think it was going. Gonna... I have um, there. There were two posters that lived at the venture for years of uh, the the Fourth uh, of July, the protest, the homophile uh, for nineteen sixty five in front of um, Independence Hall, and they had two posters of that, and it's Barbara Giddings and and Frank Kameny and uh, you know those people. Um, and I, and I I got the posters, so like I I have oh, them. Yeah, great. Did you frame them. Nice yeah, that, well, yeah, they they came framed. Yeah, yeah oh, Henry was great. like putting them in my car. We were all tearful, and you know, at yeah. the end. But Henry's been at Le Peg for a little while. Yeah, and uh, they're part. It's, and he messaged me and said, you know, Julia Scotty's coming. I'm like, oh my god, yes, please, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, please. 
Thank you. I hope I hope I don't disappoint you guys. You no. couldn't. You couldn't possibly. You couldn't possibly. Um, well, every set I've ever seen you do, even the even the ones that weren't your best, you're funny. You're just funny. Uh, they always said that about my last set on AGT, and then they were right. My last. Well, that's kind of that's the one I was talking about. Well, well, I'll tell you the reason for that. Yes. And, uh, we felt like. Um, you have to remember, I only got the 90, 90 seconds, seconds. And, I had, and the material I had, I I was very limited in what I could do without being censored. Right. And so I said to my manager, I said, look, let's do this. We'll, we'll space it so we'll have two really good sets. And then if I go to the, if I go further, we'll have one not so strong set. But then if I make it to the finals, I'll have, I had killer material. Right. So, it was, you know, I felt like I had built up enough of a, cushion popularity wise right, right i know what the hell i was talking about <laughs> but the day they bumped me i they told me when i came in that morning one of the crew uh said to me uh, are you going home tonight julia <laughs> <laughs> i'm still not even up to think well you know you never know and right they had already they had decided who was going to win and who yeah well who was going home wait are you saying yeah, reality got, television isn't isn't real, real? I didn't say that. <laughs> Tell me what's coming up. Know. What's going on for well, you? I want to give you one last uh, code of Oh, yeah, please. Um, um, now I forgot what it was. Got, so I forget what's coming up. Uh, what's coming up, I did another movie. I did uh, I did a short, again, one line with Ilana Glazer. Do you know who no. Yes. Oh, you do. Okay. Broad City. Yeah. Oh, she's in a short film. Broad City. Yeah. And so I did that a couple of months ago. And I don't know when that's coming out. Uh, we're doing some touring with Funny Women of a Certain Age. I'm going to be out at the Bay Street Theater in, um, in the Hamptons. And I can't remember the name. Sag Harbor. Sag, Sag Harbor. Harbor. Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to. And um, just basically touring. That's that's it. Just making a living. Yeah. Nice. You know, and the album is going well, too. So. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, yeah, uh, Primal Cuts is the album that came out yeah, in probably. April, right, of this year. Yeah, and we had some issue with uh, with uh, Sirius and uh, Pandora and a couple of, of these, but they were trying to get royalties. We get paid when they air these things right. as the performer. They were trying to get us royalties as the writer, too, because... You know, if you're a songwriter, you get credit, you get royalties all the, no matter who sings the right. song. Well, we were writer creators of our material, so we felt like we should get paid for both. Agreed. Um, they, you know, it's it ain't gonna happen. So hopefully, the album will be back up on Sirius and, okay. and Pandora. Soon. I think it's it, it's it is available right now on Apple Music. Right. Is that the yeah. best way for people to buy it? What's the best way to get it? Yeah, you can't get a CD anymore. Okay. I, I, yeah. I mean, I I have. <laughs> Julia really is in her home office. I will, I have these download cards that I sell at shows. Oh, oh perfect! So if uh, people like you know, what, if they're ten bucks, and I'll, I will autograph them for you if you want. Oh, fun! And on the back, there's a code. And you just punch that code in, and you down, and it get you get download, you get the album downloaded. So oh, I love cool. that. What an age we live I in! I love that. Going on the road with these, then going. I just remember, like, I yeah, funny that way came out on your birthday. Julia Scotty, funny that way. <laughs> Julia Scotty, <laughs> funny that way came out on your birthday. Jesus, I didn't even remember. It that. came out on your birthday. I put your birthday on my calendar for some reason, and you're scaring me here. Yeah, I know, right? I'm a stalker. Um, now, I I I do that with Facebook birthdays because they don't always show up. You know, I the quirk. Sorry, um, I have a couple of people that I I do yeah with birthdays. I have to put them in my phone so I remember. Right, but I remember. I don't know why I put yours there. I really don't. But I remember that it came out on your birthday because I was like, the minute I could buy it, I bought it. Oh my god! I have to tell Susan that yeah. because uh, uh, she will love that. She's a she's. I got to say something about her. She um, she doesn't need to support my career. Okay, she doesn't need to be the proponent of my career that she is. But this woman, she has done more for me on social media than I, I ever did. She, I, I could care less about social media. Gotcha. 
even though I should be doing it all. But she's out there with Instagram, and she, I mean, yes, she's she's pushing the movie, but she's pushing me too. Yeah. She's an amazing woman. I love her to death. I love her to death. She's a sweetheart. It's I, almost like um, you're worth it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm a recovering Catholic. I'm not worth anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I. You know. I saw that in so much. And and you know, here is an NYU professor who. I mean, she's crossing Delancey, and you know, I didn't know that part of things. Having you know, and I had already seen it a half a dozen times. Um. But then I went. Well, that makes perfect sense because she is such a storyteller. Um, she's a wonderful story yeah because that was that was so brilliant and it had to be intimate or it wouldn't have been powerful um when she sent the crew up to the hospital yeah that was a i knew she was serious right Right. here i am dying i'm just about dead she's recording my death for posterity but we did get that hospital story in about that that uh, physical therapist, and I have come to find out that I wasn't alone. I've seen several stories by trans women mm-hmm. who got the same crap not from their own hospital, with the the gender uh, being misgendered, yeah. oh yeah, and being called sir and everything else, and it's like of of all the places you would think you'd be a safe space, right? Right, think it would be a hospital. Yeah, I, you know. The only thing worse than women's health care in America is trans health care. Yeah. Mm, um, you're right. It, it just is. And and that does happen where you'll get these individuals, uh, you're in the hospital, you're sick, you're vulnerable, and they're, they misgender, they dead name, they, you know, especially depending on what's on your chart. Um, it's it's certainly not. A- oh, I had, when I went in for my, I had my heart surgery. This is a top notch heart surgeon. Right? Sure. Just before they take me up, he said to me, listen, I don't know if there's going to be, I don't know much about uh, transgender, but we're going to have to put a, a catheter in you. Is your urethra, where's your urethra? I said, right in the <laughs> <laughs> had to re-wrap it. For sure. For yeah. millis- the millisecond, he looked at me like, is she kidding? <laughs> yeah, they make it so we can just pee out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's just like, a, what the hell? Pee right your eyes. How do you buy okay. shirts? <laughs> right. Yeah. But that's the thing, you know, you can you can handle these things and you can hate people over it. It's just you just laugh at yeah. it. You know, if you're comfortable and confident in who you are, just like please. Right. <laughs> right. I haven't got time for your stupidity. Just fix my heart, will you? Exactly. Or I'll pee in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that note (laughs) i you know i could i could talk to you for a day um you apparently yes yes, they um you know you've been an amazing inspiration um and you know i know it's uh it's just you're getting up every day and going out in the world as exactly who you are and and that's what holds so much power so you know i certainly thank you for that um, I am a huge fan and always will be. As am I. Uh, as is Charles. And we can't wait to meet you in person at La Peg mm-hmm. uh, on October 15th. I believe it's a 10 o'clock show and you are certainly the headliner. Yes. Um, Which means I won't get home until late. Yeah, probably. Um, and so I'll you'll be have, booking it from work. I will be there. Yeah, Char- <laughs> Charles has to work oh. until about 10 in the theater. But uh. What do you do? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a technical supervisor for uh, a theater called the Performance Garage. Yeah. Oh, okay. I make dancers look pretty. Okay. Right. <laughs> Maybe you make me look pretty. Yeah. So, um, not we, a lot of work to do. We will be there. Uh, it, you, you know, it is not a ticketed event, it is a get your reservation. Yes. For a table at LePeg, and, and uh, they'll be serving dinner until 11 and drinks until close. We'll put the information oh, wow. about yeah. that in the ep- the notes of this episode. And if we want to uh, learn more about the fabulous Julia Scotty, where should we go? Ask your partner. She seems to know everything about me. <laughs> <laughs> JuliaScotty.com. Yeah, JuliaScotty.com. Is the way okay, go. fine. Yeah, what did I tell you? Yes, I want to thank you both for uh, just a very, a very 
this was a very comfortable sometimes i can't wait to get off of these things it's just uh, this was very nice and very welcoming and, and you know i, I do appreciate it Glad. i really really do thank you we appreciate thank you, you. Having me. likewise you were wonderful we'll see you in a couple of weeks yes. we'll see you in a couple yes. of weeks thank you thank you right. thank you so much give you the official julie scotty fan club salute there <laughs> there it is <laughs> thanks julia Full Circle is a Never Scurred Productions podcast, hosted by Charles Tyson Jr. and Martha Madrigal, produced and edited by Never Scurred, executive produced by Charles Tyson Jr. and Martha Madrigal. Our theme and music is by the Jingle Berries. All names, pictures, audio, and video clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective copyright holders.